So, Dr. Jabala, thank you for joining us again. So, were there any significant new discoveries on the origin of the virus, so that we could get a better understanding of it and find a way to kill it? Uh, not yet. We are still waiting for China to uh, open up its information door and allow us at least to have an answer on this patient zero. I think that remains really critical. What we have uh, learned, at least guessing from uh, its genomic makeup, is this virus can stay around for a long period of time and detect it if it wished to do that. So it has adapted some mechanisms of not being able to be detected. And that's the part that's uh, concerning many of us, is whether this virus has figured out where to hide in the human body. And if it does that, all the tests we have available today are not going to detect this virus. We are seeing a rise in numbers of recovered patients of COVID-19 getting confirmed again with the virus. So do you think this is reinfection or relapse? And what is the difference between these two? Uh, you know, it's a very good question because in South Korea, as an example, I think the, the, the South Korean government did something very good. When people are deemed or declared uh, free of virus, they're out of the hospital, but they are in self-quarantine. So they're not mixing with other people. It's one, only when they come back for their follow-up, which is one of the best strategy I've seen, some people, their immune system will work very hard and will make antibodies against this difficult virus and they will clear it. And because now their immune system has learned what the virus looked like and how to attack it, I think it will be hard for the virus to infect those people again. Unfortunately for others, their immune system only worked halfway and did only one job. It did the job of clearing the virus from you now but they didn't do the second job of teaching the immune system what the virus looks like. So because it cleared all the virus, it doesn't mean it cleared it 100%. So when these people do the test to get out of the hospital, they are negative. When they go back to their homes, they get on with their lives, they come back again, they are positive. It means the virus was sleeping during that short period of time, if I may call it that, and then it just woke up. It means it's reactivated. So scientists start to think about it and really think for the necessity to have better assays when somebody is declared cured or is declared virus free. What kind of drugs or vaccines are now being used to treat COVID-19 patients? If you are in phase one, meaning that you're developing very mild symptoms, I think hydroxychloroquine has been shown to help a lot of these patients. If you're in phase two and you start developing some severe uh, symptoms, like you can't breathe very well, you have fever, you have pain, you have a chance of 50-50 of this drug working and helping. But if you are in phase three and now you are in an ICU, your chances of survival are 10%. Every one of them is saying, uh, we have the secret recipe for the vaccine, and please trust us, we'll give you a vaccine in 18 months. Uh, the reality of the matter is, this particular virus is very difficult to target with a vaccine. It's not the flu virus. These viruses are smart, they know how to avoid the immune system, so it's going to be very hard for someone to get very lucky and in 18 months or two years to come out with a vaccine. Uh, I am not very optimistic about the vaccine. Uh, I think I have seen enough data with SARS-CoV-1. I've seen a lot of data with MERS and we still don't have a vaccine for either because of their complexity. If I may put it a little bit differently, I think so people can understand uh, the virus that causes AIDS, the HIV retrovirus, came to us in the late 70s, early 80s. So that's over 40 years ago. And we spent billions of dollars and we had so many trials on so many people and the final blow to a vaccine for HIV ended uh, a couple of months ago 
because the largest clinical trial that was ever done in patients who were actually infected with the virus failed. So that tells you that a vaccine is not something easy and it's not something simple to do. This coronavirus, otherwise known as SARS-CoV-2, is believed to have leaped out of an animal host into a human at a Wuhan live animal market. However, amid the coronavirus pandemic, various theories about its origins have been thrown out or even supported by the scientific community. And one of them is that the COVID-19 virus came from a government laboratory in Wuhan, China, and China strongly denies this possibility. So from a virologist perspective, is there a chance that the coronavirus could have been engineered at a lab? From what we know, up to today about SARS-CoV-2 and how complex it is compared to the original SARS-CoV-1, uh, there is no human being on Earth today who is smart enough to make this virus in a lab. So that's number one. Uh, that's just impossible. Number two, a virus cannot just leave the lab. Somebody has to take the virus out of the lab and being in a, a biosafety research laboratory level four, P4, it's almost impossible to do that. Uh, you can take things in, but it's very hard to take things out. Now, the question that many ask, perhaps uh, the thought of this virus is to make it as a bioweapon. You know, if you want to kill people with a virus, SARS-2 is your worst weapon. There are better viruses that can wipe out the whole population on this planet. Uh, this virus is 100% natural. It's, this virus has evolved in nature, living in bats and other birds, and it just managed to cross into the human uh, somewhere in the Hubei region. I still don't think at this wet food market. The data from the Chinese and the data from WHO joint mission is somehow contradictory of where the event happens. That's why I get always back to patient zero. Patient zero will be the key to answer many of these questions. So you're saying that there is no possibility that the naturally occurring virus could have accidentally escaped from the lab by maybe a staff or a scientist being accidentally infected with the virus and um, spreading it throughout Wuhan. The biosafety level four is almost like you're in a spacecraft floating somewhere in space. If you infect yourself, it means you're going to puncture your suit. And if you puncture your suit, it means your oxygen consumption and oxygen levels in the suit will decrease. And when that happens, there'll be red alarms that are going to sound. Uh, you know, to infect yourself in a P4 lab without anyone noticing, it's, it, it's almost impossible because of all the high technology, the cameras, and you're not allowed to work by yourself. So you always work either in twos or in threes. And because everything is computerized in terms of oxygen consumption, I think if there is a puncture in your suit, everyone would know about it. But I was very surprised that some of these conspiracy theories were actually backed by scientists. I think we live in the world of uh, make-believe, if I, if I may call it that. I think there are people who are looking for this 20-second spotlight fame, uh, including the, the Nobel Prize from France, uh, uh, Luc Montagnier. Uh, I think people who uh, manipulate viruses on a daily basis uh, have come out and disagreed with him. Because the only thing we can do to a virus like this is to make it weaker and weaker so we can use it as a vaccine, what we call a live attenuated virus. It means it's still alive, but it's not going to kill you, but it's going to give time for your immune system to react and to make antibodies. Apart from that, uh, it's very hard to manipulate, particularly SARS-CoV-2. If any of these scientists who are speaking to the fact, I think they can come out with uh, proof and with evidence, or even show us how a virus can escape a P4 lab.
I, I personally, I would be very, very interested in that, but I, I really doubt it. I think people like to always join when there is an argument. And I think for some people, it's either to settle some old scores or to really create a buzz for themselves. But overall, I am 100% uh, confident that there is not a single human being on Earth who can, one, synthesize the virus, and two, can infect themselves, leave the P4 lab, and unleash this virus on the rest of the world. There are so many talks and so many theories out there about the origins of the virus. Where did that all come from? I think China is being very mute on many of these issues. Uh, I'm not too worried about the origin of the virus. I want to know who was patient zero. Because patient zero will tell us many things. The first thing patient zero will tell us is, what is this special mutation that this virus mutated to infect us? Because today we have thousands and thousands of information of this genome of the virus that we managed to get from several patients around the world, but we don't have time zero of the virus. We need that time zero to understand how does the genome of patient zero differs from the genome that has caused havoc in Italy, as an example. The second would be the exact time, because I never accepted the fact that this started in December. That just can't be. There are people who were sick in California in October, November time. And these people, some of them who contacted me, used to work for Tesla. And Tesla has a factory in Wuhan, not very far from the epicenter was. And they were sick when they came back. And, they, and when they went to the emergency room, the, the, the doctors there didn't know what they had. They thought they basically had some sort of viral infection. They couldn't say what virus it was. If this is something natural and it happened, as China said, there is no problem. Uh, you know, some people would call it an act of God. But if China lied from the beginning and uh, WHO misled the rest of the world, I think every government has the right to have answers, especially from WHO. We are actually entering a phase where uh, the, this coronavirus pandemic curve is flattening at the moment. But the CDC said that a second wave of the coronavirus is expected to hit the United States next winter during the flu season and could be even more catastrophic. So two questions. Why is CDC saying a second wave would coincide with the flu season? And do you see the next round coming? I am really curious to know what is the data. Everyone is modeling this virus based on the flu. They are thinking this virus is seasonal. Uh, we haven't seen any coronavirus that visited us that was seasonal. It's either they come infect us because we disturb them, and as soon as they find a new reservoir where they are happy, they leave us alone. The first SARS died a natural death. Uh, and it took us almost two or three years to get rid of it. MERS uh, is still around because MERS in Saudi Arabia found a reservoir called the Camel. This wave, it's, it's like a tsunami. It has been moving because people are moving. And as soon as that virus got into communities, it's really sparked into all these clusters. So if you get rid of all the clusters, I can't see how a second wave would come. The country that worries me most about the second wave is China. I am just not comfortable in my chair about the numbers from China, about only one region. The reason is they are actually talking these days more about doing more tests. It's very strange. If you say you controlled the virus because you did this harsh confinement, why are you retesting people again? It means you have new cases that you're changing the definition of new cases, so your numbers will always kind of fluctuate between the hundreds. And that worries me from China. I think if a second wave would come, it would come from China. But I hope all the governments now know the story and they have to be very vigilant, especially with respect to business with China in terms of people moving back and forth. I think if they lower their bars and allow air traffic to China to resume as normal, 
Of course, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth wave will come. But in terms of uh, seasonal, and it will be weather dependent, coronaviruses are not weather dependent. They're not the flu virus. The many countries who have been recently uh, speaking about opening their countries, opening their schools, even giving dates when the schools would open, I hope they are doing this with extreme caution and understanding what the consequence can be.